In this documentary, we are going to take a look at the alien race called the Greys, also referred to as Zeta Reticulans, Roswell Greys, or Greys, are extraterrestrial beings. They are frequent subjects of close encounters and alien abduction claims. The details of such claims vary widely, but typically greys are described as being human-like with small bodies, grey-colored skin, enlarged, hairless heads, with large, black eyes. Many believe that this alien race comes from the Zeta Reticuli system. It is a wide binary star system in the southern constellation of Reticulum. From the southern hemisphere the pair can be seen with the naked eye as a double star in very dark skies. Based upon parallax measurements, this system is located at a distance of about 39.3 light years, 12 parsecs, from Earth. Both stars are solar analogs that have characteristics similar to those of the Sun. They belong to the Zeta Hercules moving group of stars that share a common origin. Bob Lazar explains what he learned while being employed at Area 51. Supposedly, the information, now this isn't something that I determined, it's something I was told, that uh, the crafts originated from uh, a planet that orbited the Zeta Reticuli star system. Zeta Reticuli 1 and Zeta Reticuli 2 are two, two stars of a binary star system. Uh, the craft allegedly came from there. The association between gray aliens and Zeta Reticuli originated with the interpretation of a map drawn by Betty Hill by a school teacher named Marjorie Fish sometime in 1969. Betty Hill, under hypnosis, had claimed to have been shown a map that displayed the alien's home system and nearby stars. Upon learning of this, Fish attempted to create a model from a drawing produced by Hill, eventually determining that the stars marked as the alien's home were Zeta Reticuli, a binary star system. With Zeta Reticuli being close to 40 light years away, the technology they must possess to be able to travel that far of a distance, is far advanced of what mankind's understand of technology is to date. Dr. Michio Kaku. Now we have 400, 400 sightings by U.S. Navy pilots and seasoned military personnel that cannot be explained. These objects fly between Mach 5 and Mach 20, 20 times the speed of sound. Wow. These objects can drop 70,000 feet within a matter of seconds. These objects can zigzag, creating G-forces that are several hundred times the force of gravity, enough to crush the bones of any humans. These objects can fly without creating any exhaust. In other words, quote, they're not ours, unquote, as stated by one Pentagon official. Then the next question is, if they're not ours, then whose are they? The technology to cross galaxies is unimaginable. Bob Lazar claims he has worked on reverse engineering an alien craft housed at Area 51, during his employment. Here is Bob Lazar. Here now I had access and was permitted to view and look at the operation of this main level with the gravity amplifiers and the level below. The propulsion system is an, uh, a gravity propulsion system. The power source is an antimatter reactor. Uh, this technology does not exist at all. The craft that I worked on, that when it's, when it's going to travel a long distance, that is how it operates. It flies along and it, it puts its belly to the target and then brings all the amplifiers to power and, you know, it shoots off in that direction. It doesn't fly as it would in the science fiction movies. It flies with the belly, the bottom forward. Believed to be one of the first spacecraft, an alien gray recovered. Happened in Roswell, New Mexico former Air Force Intelligence, Richard Doty. In 1947, two craft crashed into Mexico. They collided, and one crashed near Corona, New Mexico, which is public record. The second craft crashed way out west of Magdalena, New Mexico, and that wasn't found until two years later. But the one that crashed in Corona, they also found a live alien. That live alien was named Eva, and he was transported to, it was a, ma a male, was transported to Los Alamos. Is it possible we are looking at the first recording of an alien gray? Many believe so. The following is a video supposedly of an interrogation of an alien gray. Area 51 has been the center of many who believe, alien craft and alien grays have been recovered. It is believed that one gray survived the crash and was taken to Area 51. 
Some believe that the greys have come to Earth to harvest genes from animals and humans. It has been said that the greys are heading for extinction due to their degrading health. Many are believed to be clones from a few original greys. Is it possible that this is the reason behind abductions of humans and animals here on Earth? There have been many reports of animal mutilations throughout time. Could this be connected to the greys as some sort of genetic experiments? We are going to take a look at a report of cattle mutilation. There's so many things that I, d I don't understand uh, about it, and uh, no one seems to be able to explain it either. On a Colorado ranch, cattle are found mutilated with surgical precision and no trace of blood. Is this the work of predators, or something more mysterious? First I, I thought it just died naturally, and then I got closer to it and I could see it wasn't natural. The eyes were gone, the tongue was gone, the ears were gone, the sex organs were cut out. It's just kind of weird. I guess one of the strangest things is the laser cuts. Uh, why is there no blood? How come body parts aren't strung around? Laser precision, surgically removed. No blood found on the scene. Many believe the greys are behind the mutilations, possibly for genetic study. It would theorize, what many believe, that the greys have a genetic breakdown, within their DNA. Mutilations are a global event. There are reports around the world. Cattle mutilations and livestock mutilations are a global phenomenon. In England, you've had horses and sheep. There were cases reported in Australia in the 50s. There's been approximately 2,500, 3,000 cases in South America since 2000. If the greys are behind the animal mutilations around the world, what could the purpose be? Theories say, genetic study, in an attempt to reverse the greys genetic code. There have been thousands of reportings of human abductions. Greys would go on to become an integral part of ufology, and other extraterrestrial related folklore. This is particularly true in the case of the United States, according to journalist C.D.B. Bryan, 73% of all reported alien encounters in the United States, describe grey aliens, a significantly higher proportion than other countries. One of the skeptical theories is that these people are attention seeking or they're in it for fame and fortune. Well, not sure there's too much fame or a lot of fortune to be had. They're speaking out more because, because they're looking for answers, I think. If you have an experience like that and you genuinely believe you've had that experience, part of you will say, maybe I'm going crazy. Well, I just flipped out, I became hysterical. Because it's one thing to say that you've seen a UFO, it's quite another to say that you've been on board one. There are different experiences people have reported when abducted. Some report, it was unharmful. Others say, it was terrifying. A number of people believe, after the first abduction, they experience contact with the aliens throughout their life. Author, William Konkolsky. The term abductee has been used a lot over the years uh, to explain how um, some unknown intelligence, it might be extraterrestrial, it might even be from another dimension or another time, have, that these entities have come to take people against their will, to do things, they, they take, take them away, they do things to these people that are very unpleasant, and the whole thing leaves the person that went through this type of ex experience. <laughs> Um, very victimized, but um, the term experiencer is a bit more f loose. It is just indicating that somebody's encountered um, an intelligence, but not necessarily been traumatized by it in all cases, not necessarily been taken uh, in all cases, just they've come into contact with it. Um, the term contactee actually was another term that was used um, back, you know, in the 50s, a little bit in the 60s, that kind of a thing, it's no longer in vogue. But experiencer is, I think, the, the proper term for it because not everybody's taken and those who go are not always taken against their will. Very first memory in life is actually of an encounter. <laughs> I was two years old, I was in my crib late at night, and a face came into the room and stared down at me. 
uh, at the foot of the crib. It was kind of skeletal. That's how I was able to put it into some context. Because at, at the tender age of two, you don't really have a background in saying, oh, that's an alien. Well, maybe today's, you know, television. Back in 1973, you know, that was the closest I could equate it to. But it wasn't a dream. It didn't go away. I started to scream and it continued to stare down at me. And my parents in the other room, um, I could hear my mother's voice saying, go back to sleep, go back to sleep, it's okay. And she never came to the room. And after a few moments, the face just got up um, and, and left the room. I say face, there was a body attached to it, but it was so dark I really couldn't make it out. And uh, I could tell it was on its way over to my brother's room. Gray alien abductions happen all around the world. The next story comes out of British Columbia. It was October 1988. We were driving in northern British Columbia, and all of a sudden, out of absolutely nowhere, these lights appeared behind the car. It was almost as wide as two lanes. We actually thought that they were a big truck or something. The lights started popping on and off. The girl driving started to get really afraid. In front, these short um, greys were walking towards me, and they were about three and a half feet tall, a little bit larger, bulbous type of heads with the uh, round black eyes. There was no features on them that, di that distinguished one from the other. They walked towards me, and they took me by the hand. They were really cold. When I looked up, I saw a very large craft, probably about 40 or 50 feet across. These short um, greys that had been with me just let go of my hand and I walked on board the craft. We walked on board this craft and they sat me down on this chair and in front of me came a screen out of thin air. And then they started showing me all of these different images of um, catastrophes on the planet. Earthquakes, uh, solar flares, war. And I was shown all of these different, what I believe is sort of like timelines and paths that humanity could take. And then I was explained how if we came together as, um, as a species that we would be able to avoid any and all of these events. It was explained to me that they are the caretakers of this earth and that their purpose in being here is to help enlighten us, make us aware of who we are, and to make sure that we do not destroy ourselves or the planet. There are thousands of reports of human interaction with aliens. A common occurrence, most interactions describe the greys as the alien, when asked to describe the event. Many speculate that the greys are involved with world governments imposing their agenda. The following, are theories of such events. It has been rumored that President Dwight D. Eisenhower, has met, and signed treaties with aliens. Laura Eisenhower. Eisenhower's great-granddaughter, tells an interesting story. It's a true story. What I have learned about Eisenhower's relationship to extraterrestrial beings and ET government treaties is that supposedly in 1954 there was a meeting at Edwards Air Force Base. Uh, they seemed to have diplomatic intention. The treaties had to do with bartering exchanges of planetary goods, uh, natural resources, elements, and compounds. And it was in exchange for like things like abduction. As she goes on telling her story, she mentions, what many to believe, that the greys are interested in the human race for genetics. It would seem to collaborate beliefs. That the greys are experiencing a genetic breakdown. But they need our DNA. We have a treasure of DNA that is basically a living library. You're going to have your well-intentioned people that are trying to do their best for humanity that are aware of what's going on to a certain degree. And they are being heavily stopped from being able to put out disclosure. Plus, what they have to lose uh, is their life. With what we just heard, is it possible our government has been in agreements for exchanges? including human abductions. If so, how long has this been going on? And, how will the world react, if this is true? Many believe the government has been in contact with aliens for years. Scramble to intercept them. When the jets would get there, they would disappear. When the jets would land, they would reappear again. Basically, it was all over the news, all over the entire world. UFOs over Washington, 
is believed by many, was when agreements were made with aliens and the President of the United States, happened in this time frame. More and more people saw the same thing. They were flying over the heart of Washington, so that is essentially the equivalent of landing on the White House lawn. We had a series of UFO sightings that were buzzing the White House, the U.S. Capitol, I think in an attempt to make a very symbolic direct contact saying, hey, we'd like to talk to you guys. You've got too many tangible, objective sightings. And of objects, by the way, that were doing things, it was just utterly, just incredibly extraordinary. We've got a physical phenomenon. It's real. The question is why, and that's something we don't have the answer to. There's a long litany of reports that uh, the U.S. government has authored on UFOs, and many of them show dramatic UFO evidence for real. And yet, their conclusion was, it's either hoaxes or mistaken sightings of natural phenomena and so forth. In modern times, there's the idea that there's a, a secret and small elite body of people who are covering up the truth from the rest of society that aliens from space have visited planet Earth, but nobody else is allowed to know about it. There have been many reports that abductees have found mysterious objects inserted in their bodies after what they have described as a gray alien encounter. The following is of the objects found and removed. Patricia told me about a remarkable experience with her family and herself involving a UFO and uh, apparently missing time or contact as some people would refer to it. Patricia had a splinter in her foot and her doctor he said, well, let's just take an x-ray and just make sure everything's okay. He took an x-ray and he came back puzzled. He said, when did you get the uh, surgical clips in your feet? And she said, what are you talking about? What surgical clips? And he said, well, it looks like you've had an osteotomy. They put surgical clips in your feet. And she said, I've never had a surgery in my entire life. Dr. Roger Lear was a podiatrist, a foot and ankle surgeon, who specialized in looking into claims that some of these alien abductees had been implanted with small devices of some kind. When you look at the objects on x-ray, all you see is metal objects inside the body next to the bone. When we surgically opened these people up, we didn't see the metal at all. It was hidden inside these cocoons of each of these two people. People that Roger Lear uh, dealt with were people who came to him because they had the strong feeling that they'd had an alien abduction experience. As more evidence comes forward, it seems the Greys are responsible for most abductions in the past. Is it possible the Greys are doing genetic research on the human race. Do they have agreements in place with our government? Will the truth ever be told? Thank you for watching. Please, like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications.